So uh, hi guys. So today I am going to cover this topic. Uh, it's called property based testing, and I'm going to use a library called Hypothesis, which is written in Python for the same. Uh, this is also my uh, propo talk proposal for the Pi Daily conference, which is happening on 18th and 19th of March. Uh, in case you are around Delhi, feel free to drop drop by. So let's get started. So property based testing. So this is a kind of like a unique concept for me when I started it and I have been using this library for around a month now, maybe more than a month and it has yielded me some great results so far. So let's start with the basics. So what are property based tests? So property based testing uh, is be in, in property based testing you make statement about the output of your code based on the input and these statements are then verified for different set of possible inputs so you have uh, a series of inputs and then you assert them with the expected output that's that's all you do uh, a property based testing framework runs the same test over and over again uh, with generated input so when i say with generated input so uh, the our test function in property based testing just uh, checks for the property part of the function which you are testing which you are writing the test for which you are writing the test uh, so that's pretty much about property based testing and the main uh, advantage of property based testing is instead of manually asserting each of the stuff you automate it so if you are writing like 14 lines of code if you are using pytest uh, you probably land up with like four to five lines of code with uh, hypothesis and we'll cover that in the later part of this presentation so what is the difference between example based testing and property based testing so this is pretty important so if I take a normal example and which is an example based testing so let's say I have a function and I'm doing the sum of numbers in that function so as you can see I have a function over here which says sum of numbers and then it is adding those two numbers and it is returning me the output and that's all that's all it does let's go on to the our beloved terminal and probably I can explain you a bit more so let's start with the let's take this example multiplication numbers dot pi so I have a function called multiply I have two numbers a comma b and uh, I'm going to actually add these two oh, sorry multiply these two numbers and let's say I am printing the same so I'll do this and if I run this program it's showing me the output so let's go through the program again it's a simple program which it just multiplies two numbers and shows the output so this is what it basically does now if I want to write the test for this and normally I would call this function pass some parameters or pass some numbers and assert them with the expected output so this is how I'll do it if I have to do the example based testing part uh, just a disclaimer over here so I have already installed pytest in my environment so pytest is a cool python library used for testing uh, in case you don't know how it performs the testing part you should probably check it out uh, it's it's a cool library it's a great library and it's used by most of the developers right now for testing if you write a lot of python code uh, so let's write a test multiply function and this is going to test my whether my multiply function works correctly or not so i'm going to Expected output. Sorry, let's take a good variable name. Let's call it uh, test output equal to multiply and I'm going to put an assert here. So, I, what I'm asserting is that my test output should be equal to 100 because 10 times 10 is 100, right? And to run this thing I'm going to write p dot py dot tst and the file name 
Oops, I just made a boo boo. And now it should work. Yeah, so my test has passed without any errors. And this is the beauty of it. So I'm asserting the function with the expected output. That's all I'm doing after passing certain set of values into it. So you write down the test function, you write down the exact input, you write down the expected results and the system runs the test and check if assertion matches or not. And if it doesn't matches, it shows you an assertion error. So I can show you an example of it. If I make this, let's say 1900, it will show an assertion error. Yeah, so it says assert 100 is not equal to 1900, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100. So this is as simple as that. Now, moving on. If you think it's this thing is pretty easy and elegant, which I believe it, it is, but in the long run, it isn't. And there's a reason behind it. So there are certain issues with the example-based testing or the normal testing which you do generally. So some of them are that uh, the basic thing is that you may miss the boundary cases. Since in property-based test, you have a set of values, a set of input values. So it covers most of the test cases and it covers the boundary cases as well in, uh, you know, nine by 10 times. Uh, with each iterations with as your code base grow writing code for test becomes more complex and it is time consuming as well uh, as your underlying feature set is growing and growing you tend to put in more tests more tests and the and in fact the integration test is becomes you know chaos because you keep on writing the test and then there's a thing that you know, and especially if you are using it with a mm, CI environment like Travis or Jenkins, it it creates a lot of issues. And plus, you don't want your code coverage to go down below a certain point. And that's why writing tests in itself become a task. And uh, <clears throat> to be honest, most of the dev don't like to write test cases at times. But <clears throat> there's an, the beauty of uh, property-based testing is that with less code you can cover most of the cases and most important point which example based testing does not provide is writing random and completely unbiased example so if you are a developer if you are testing a function in your mind you will have a set of values and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that in the later part of the presentation how you know writing a completely random unbiased example help you you know, catch those errors which might creep into your system unknowingly. And uh, now let's start with the property based testing. So in property based testing, you basically define the inputs then you define the expected result. And use, if you're using hypothesis, you just let the framework do all the work. And if you don't believe me, let's let's take a look at it. So how would you write a trivial test? So here I have a function called def sort list. So it's a sorting function. It takes in a list type, it sorts the list and it returns the sorted list. Uh, now let's suppose I am writing an example based test for this. So I will put in a unsorted list. I will pass the unsorted list to this function and I'll assert that the output I'm getting, the data type of that particular variable is list and I'm getting the list type as the output and I'm also asserting whether the same uh, result I'm getting uh, is in a sorted way. So these are the two things I'm currently looking for. That's how you define the normal test. Now before we start writing the property based test, I think we should all install hypothesis. So to install hypothesis it's pip installable so you just need to type pip install hypothesis and the rest will be taken care of uh, it's already installed on my system if not you can just go ahead and do it so let's try to test with hypothesis and let's take a look at it so i have an example of uh, sorting function over here so i'm 
So these are the two things that you need to import, which is from hypothesis import given strategies. Uh, so a strategy in simple term is a recipe for random data. If you if you are comfortable with PyTest, you probably know what strategy is. And uh, given is a decorator, which is which marks which we use to mark over a test function and it generates all sort of data. So here, as you can see, I have a function which uh, which sort sort a list and returns a sorted list, and then we have a test function over here. So now, in the initial example based testing, I could have gone like thousand iterations. I could have written 20, 30 lines of you know checking every possible use case that comes to my mind. But over here, what I am doing is I am defining an st dot list. So my strategy creates a list, a random list, and floods in with data, sc.txt. So within a list, I have a set of data, right? And once I pass this thing, strings, into this function, so this, this gets over here. And once I pass this into this thing, then I'm sorted. Now, I all, all I need to do is do simple assertions. So what I'm doing is I'm doing simple assertion whether it's a list or not, whether the opposite of the same, uh, I mean the result I'm getting is the uh, sorted list or not. And as you can see, this uh, should I say it's it's more like an iteration process which I'm doing right now. So it checks whether for the all possible set of inputs whether the above function holds true or not. Now, in the example based testing, I would have probably gone like crazy defining each and every example. But with property based testing, all I'm going to do is define the property for the same. So my property is every time I put in some random unordered list, I get an ordered list. And that's what it is checking right now. And that's it. So I don't need to worry about anything else. And that's the beauty of it. So with the less amount of code, my all the possible test cases are covered. So I'm pretty sorted with this thing and I know that this function works for like 99% of the time. Now moving on. Yeah, let's let's run it. Yeah, so it just passes as you can see. Right. So this is how your, you write your property based test. Now, let's dive into a bit more about hypothesis and do a hypothesis 101. So first of all, what, what is a strategy? So strategy is basically a recipe for random data. So if you want to generate a lot of random data for your test cases, be it email, IDs, uh, phone numbers, you can, you can do that using a strategy. And a hypothesis has built in types for strategies which are numbers, strings, collections, and dates. Uh, you can also write your own strategy if you want to. Uh, and the beauty of strategy is you write less and you do more with it. So when I say do more, you can use define one single strategy and you can use it again and again. So it, it acts like your fixtures, I, I would say. So let's take an example. So here I'm I'm assuming that you are uh, familiar with some of the basic maths 101. So <clears throat> I have a function in which I'm doing the sum of two numbers. And now I want to test for two properties, which are whether these two are commutative or not, and whether the plus y minus y cancels each other and I get the same thing. So this is a simple function I'm defining. So let's do this. So I have a test sum. Whoops. So I have a test hypothesis dot py. So at the given is the decorator which you use most of the time, and I have the this function called sum and associativity. Now, if I if I want to check the commutative property of this. So in example based testing, I would have taken two numbers, a uh, three and four, and I would have done assert three plus four equal equal to seven. And that's how it's going to work. 
but here I'm generating since I'm using the built-in strategy for this I'm actually using two variables uh, x and y and the st dot integers randomly generates data for the same so if I type st dot integer the first time it may land up at any random numbers for st dot integers again it will again land up at any random numbers and it will just simply checks whether x plus y is equal to y plus x so I don't need to explicitly define each and every use case so it is covering most of the part over here and my code is pretty less so in just like three lines I have covered most of the cases had it been example based test I would have written like four to five lines of code for the same uh, then uh, if I want to check this whether uh, x plus y bracket minus y equal equal to x so again I'm defining these two strategies and uh, this is how it's done so you can see I'm not writing any particular number or passing any values to it I'm just defining it in terms of the variable so mathematically it is I need to write so it, it trades over a set of values and also uh, practically I just I'm just writing a lot of less code so that's how it works let's try and run this program first right so as you can see in my program I haven't used any values I haven't put any physical value over here so these are our variables and the st dot integers the strategy for for me takes care of all the things so I really don't need to write uh, you know huge test cases for the same now how hypothesis generate data now this is pretty important if you if you are working over this uh, hypothesis uses fake factory and if you if you if you don't have this library you probably need to install using pip install faker and it's integ integratable with most of the test suits out there which are written in python so let's let's try and do some digging with this how you can generate some fake data because it's it really helps when it comes to testing so you do from hypothesis dot extras oops dot fake factory import fake underscore factory right now now what you can do is you can pass certain parameters about what kind of data you want to generate right as you can see in this example over here so we'll we'll do this I want to generate a random email so it will generate a random email again 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 and so on and so forth right now if I want to you know generate some random names it will generate some random names right and this is pretty cool now you can do the same with phone numbers as well so if you are testing some forms uh, in flask or django and you want to automate that test this is the right thing to do and you can create your own uh, strategy for faking the data as well so it's it's not a problem uh, yeah the most important thing so I love this part actually and I'll get on to this specific example in the later slide as well so from hypothesis dot extra dot date time import date times oops import dates dates dot example so I'm getting a date time dot date object over here and it randomly generates a uh, it randomly generates dates as you can see now date time is one such module which creates a lot of havoc if you are using it with Django because you have to if you are writing a particular use case where there is an expiration of certain profile on a certain dates or number of days so those are the pretty some of the pretty tricky cases which happens and that's why you need to be very careful with them 
and that's why this hypothesis date module uh, actually uh, you know comes into picture and it helps you to you know find your edge cases very easily very very easily uh, as you can see dates dot example give me a date time dot date object and I can play with it and I can write my test in a much more better fashion with respect to uh, the date part then again you can have a strategy for JSON as well uh, the JSON is specifically a, a dig data type uh, if I compare it with Python so all I'm doing is I have a recursive strategy and I'm putting in some numbers key value pairs and that's all I'm doing so I can have a nested JSON example I can have anything and and it's pretty clear from this that it's easy to use and you can do a lot of stuff with this uh, especially if you are doing an integration test of an API or pushing some random data uh, hypothesis dot integers again uh, strategies dot integers so you can have like set of random integers and uh, it, it kind of like works like a random function you have so really it's you can say it's it works more like a random function but uh, if you combine this with hypothesis module in particular uh, and you don't give the starting and the end limit over here which I have given like 6 comma 10 uh, it just makes its own way then you can also generate a complex number with this so if I may write import hypothesis hypothesis dot strategy dot complex numbers dot example so I can generate oh sorry complex numbers dot examples sorry okay yeah here we go so so I can generate complex number with this and this module is specifically useful if you are using you know a lot of data processing or you are especially uh, writing a test case for some like some uh, square root equation so one of the use case was to uh, for me was to write the how to solve a quadratic equation or value of the same so if the formula is minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a and sometimes you need to have you need to check the complex number part as well that is where this whole strategy comes into picture so so most of the things are covered in strategies itself so you can have random data more powerful use case uh, test cases and then again you can obviously have text examples as well you can have is an inbuilt strategy for text uh, what more you can generate and how so here's the link uh, I'll put this in the description as well so you can check this out and generate more random data and cover more test cases with your tests now failing test now one has to be very particular about failing test because because of property based testing since the data is randomly generated and this is I think a good part because hypothesis remembers failing test and it actually helps you rectify your function or you know you put in more effort with your code or the underlying feature set for which you are running the test on and I'll give you a very excellent example so here this function what it does is it takes in the current year month and day of the person so person is an object here so what it does is it takes in its today the current birthday so like my birthday falls on like let's say 19th March 2017 and it will return me when is my next birthday so my next birthday is on 19th March 2018 right this is as simple nothing can go wrong with this function like probably what what you can land up with right now here's a beautiful part of this so if I write if I again use the date module which I was using as you can okay yeah so one of the uh, boundary condition that I initially did not think of 
was number one supposedly I get a random set of data and it has a date which is not possible for the next year like probably like 29 Feb and these kind of cases right the second thing is uh, the date is like completely not there which is which I have or I have, a, I have said in the case of 29 year uh, the year mismatch that can that can also happen and uh, this was the I mean this was the thing which excited me the most when I started with the property based testing because that was something I haven't thought of initially and uh, if I'm writing the test which is actually failing and giving me the uh, error for the same uh, so it, it does not show you the assertion error it shows you the failing test case error so uh, if you run it in your CI environment it will probably for the seventh time it will it will uh, in the till seventh or eighth iterations it may not cover that case but if you run it frequently it will get a catch of it so now once it get a catch of it that okay this is the part where your test is failing it remembers that part so as you can see uh, my test run one went fine two three four and it's an example actually uh, seven it, it runs fine and suddenly it fails on the eighth part and then i get to know that okay 29th feb scenario was not covered by my test and so on and so forth so so that's all uh, that is one thing uh, now this is all good but like one of the most curious questions i get since i'm having a set of inputs to you know generate my test cases and assert my output statement how many times does hypothesis run my test internally uh, the website says the short answer is 200 so the default configuration is 200 times but uh, for more complicated integration tests like I have I was using C profiler with Django to map this thing and it comes around to be hypothesis sometimes run like 300 or 400 times as well so yeah the longer answer is it's complicated and even I'm not able to figure this out but uh, there are two other settings that can affect this answer which is max example as max iteration so if you pass max examples you can probably set it like 20 40 50 60 and depending on the strategies which you have defined it will take those many examples and max number of iterations you can set and it will iterate over like those many times so yeah this is how hypothesis run my test the beauty part is it is integra integrable with pytest as well so i don't need to specifically go haywire and change my test suit again and again the beauty is you write less code and less of test code and you can you know develop your feature set like more freely and then you know if you want to write test for the same it's hardly a 10 20 minute job uh, these are some of the links you can refer to if you are actually using hypothesis in a uh, if you are thinking to use hypothesis for your CI environments and you can refer to some articles in details as well uh, that's all that's all I have in this short presentation uh, in case you have any questions queries or you want me to cover any other topic I'll be happy to do that in my free time and uh, that's my little bio so thank you guys thank you and uh, i'll see you around bye bye